Hi, this is Lori Kleiman, and I am excited to be joining you all today. This has really become one of my favorite topics because who of us does not live in a VUCA world? Whether it's managing your work-life balance or whether it's your, just your work or just your personal life, everything we do seems to be that VUCA kind of thing. So let's jump in. I'm going to share with you some of both the research and the solutions that I have found that have helped me at least appreciate what's going on in my own life. Now, I know that I may have joined some of you before as I've done a couple of these webinars for human capital management, but I um, want you to just know a little bit about my background because I think it helps you understand how I come to this topic. My entire life has been filled with VUCA, long before it was ever a cool word. Back in the 1980s, I was in my family business. I thought I had it all figured out, and I was going to run our business. Unfortunately, it's a commercial photo lab and really doesn't even exist anymore. So I had to figure out what to do next which is why I see my career as making lemonade out of lemons. I ended up starting my own HR consulting company, HR Partners, and it grew to be about a million dollars in sales with six employees working for me in the basement of my home. Along came Arthur J. Gallagher, and many of you may know Gallagher Benefit Services or Gallagher Bassett for Workers' Comp. They actually purchased my consulting company. I stayed on and worked for them for another seven years and decided what I really love doing is this, being out in the community, working with my favorite HR professionals and peers, and sharing some of the things I've learned from this crazy VUCA career. So now I have my own company. I work for myself. I'm everything from the administrative assistant to the senior board of, um, board of directors called HR Topics, and I work with organizations on all sorts of HR-related presentations. Now, just so you know, I also do have my master's degree in human resources, and I'm certified as both an SPHR and a SHRM SCP. So I've got that stuff behind me as well. So with that in mind, let's jump into today's topic. Let's start with just some basic definitions. What is VUCA, and what does it really mean for us? VUCA, for those of you who don't know, the acronym stands for Volatile, Uncertain, Ambiguous, and Complex. Oh, I got that a little bit turned around. I was following our chart here. But essentially what it means is that we are looking at the data that we have available to make decisions, and we are comparing that to our ability to predict the future and what might happen. So when we have very little data and we know very little about the future, things tend to be ambiguous. We don't really know what's next. If we know a lot about the future, but we don't have a ton of data, then they are just complex. If we have a lot of data coming at us all the time and we know what the future looks like, then it's likely very volatile. Things are changing all the time and we don't really know where we're going to be. And finally, uncertain means we've got a ton of information, but what we're really missing is that ability to predict the future. So keeping that in mind, let's look at a few more details about these different criteria because this is something new to most of us. When we talk about volatile, we say that the situation is understandable but not predictable. We can't really predict what's going on. And the nature, speed, and volume is very, very great. When we say something is uncertain, 
then we say that our understanding of the impact doesn't exist, but information is readily available. But we have a very low ability to predict what's actually going on. Complex means there are just a ton of interrelated parts. They can be predicted, but there is a massive impact. And I love this um, saying in here, chaos meets issue management. I mean, this is where we're trying to manage things, but it feels very chaotic. And then ambiguous is where we just don't have a lot of prior experience. And there's a hazy reality with a lot of mixed messages. So I want you to really think about where you see your organization. Is it volatile, uncertain, complex, or ambiguous? Or maybe it's all three. What do you think makes sense? So as we move on with you keeping that in mind, I want to talk a minute about how VUCA impacts the way we approach the businesses that we're in today. VUCA requires us to reframe all sorts of challenges that face our business. We may think that we know what our challenges are today, and then something comes along and happens that throws all that up into the air. SWOT analysis has become more and more critical. For those of you that may not be familiar with that terminology, SWOT analysis stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And as we are living more and more in this VUCA environment, I think it's absolutely essential that you not only understand the SWOT analysis for your organization, but that you also create a SWOT analysis for your own department or function, and that you are really owning what those strengths and weaknesses are and where you've got opportunities or challenges in the marketplace that you have to be aware of and ready to jump in on. And we are starting to look at this world as a combination of what we know today and what we can predict for the future. So we want to make sure that we're constantly evaluating both of those issues and allowing ourselves permission to accept and own what we don't really know is going to hit us. Now, I think this is a fabulous framework, and this was created by Dr. Dale Moore from the Department of the Navy. So your tax dollars have been well at work in giving us some terrific um, educational research that we can really look at our world. And what he says is that we need all these things. This is... Um, as you see, it spells out scales, which is how we get the scales framework. Um, and this is how we can approach the world of VUCA. So I really want to point out four or five of these. First of all, systems. What Dr. Moore says is that our systems must be both collaborative and interactive. If we are going to approach a world that is not a easy to predict, we must have collaboration and interconnectivity if we really want to be able to hit things head on. Innovative is something we talk about a lot, but I encourage you to think about, does your organization embrace out-of-the-box thinking? Do you allow people to be disruptive and test those ideas that may not be in the norm? Emergence is the whole idea of allowing for enabled, empowered solutions, letting things emerge naturally in the moment and not always having to have a process and a procedure. Now, learning, sorry, I skipped over that. Um, Learning is all about now 
experiences and experiments. Learning does not have to be any more classroom, education, conferences, webinars. We really want to encourage our leaders to think of learning as all sorts of different experiences that we can be providing our employees. One of the best examples we have of this is social media. How fast has social media changed in most of our lifetimes? And it allows new trends to scale at speeds we have never before seen. Things move faster than we know. The kids of today will be the workers of tomorrow, and they really believe and are right that they can personally connect with anyone in the world. They no longer feel like they need to get a passport, get on an airplane, and go across the world to meet counterparts and others with innovative ideas. They just jump on Skype, jump on Facebook, and presto, they're talking to anyone they want to know. So how do we as HR professionals really embrace all this and figure out how we want to bring it into our organizations? This is a wonderful study that's done every three years out of the University of Michigan, out of the Roth School of Business. And they talk to CEOs and ask, what do you want from your HR professionals? Of course, they want us to be human capital curators, but they also want us to be strategically positioned and culture and change champions. Why? Because they are living in this VUCA world, and they know that at any moment, they need you to give them all sorts of feedback and content for a situation that has come up at this very moment. Now, the other thing, going back to the chart we saw at the very beginning, they want you to be an analytical designer and interpreter. They know that in order to live in this world, they have got to have that data in front of them, allowing them to make really good decisions going forward. So my mantra, and many of you who might know me know that this is my tagline um, that I have really started to embrace. It was actually the subtitle of my third book, but I've taken it in a million different directions now and really have programming and content based on all of us being the strategic executive who's action-oriented and technologically savvy. And I think if you think about embracing this VUCA world, you can join me in understanding how we need these various components to move our organizations forward. So what does leadership look like in a VUCA world? To be a leader today, you have got to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and make some pretty hard decisions. We expect our leaders to be inspirational and motivating, but they've got to be willing to move beyond the norm and shift the paradigms of business that just aren't working today the way they did 20 and 30 years ago. As a leader, you have got to understand what really drives your organization, because what drives your organization is going to help you make some of those in-the-moment decisions. So think about whether your organization is one that really is focused on return on investment, or are they more interested in capturing market share and being those people out there that are an industry leader. And an industry leader, don't forget, doesn't always mean you have the most market share. Maybe you just participate on industry boards and you're out there, you're the first to hear of information. You're an industry leader when it comes to the media and somebody they call. But maybe you also want to be an organization that's constantly developing new products and is innovative in that way. Finally, 
after what we've been through the last 10 or 12 years in business, a lot of our businesses are really most concerned with risk diversification and how they are going to ensure their long-term success. So hopefully you can understand how looking at these things really make a difference in how you are going to approach the volatility and complexity that we find in business. You can't react to every single situation. So you want to make sure that you're tuned in with your organization and you're reacting to the right situations at the right time. Let's look for a minute at the strategic drivers that determine growth and engagement in the world of business. Now, once upon a time in business school, we always talked about the four Ps, price, place, promotion, and product. That really drove how your organization went to market. But now we're looking at what I like to call the four Cs of business, and that is culture, connection, collaboration, and creation, because this is really what we need to drive our organizations forward. If you don't have these four C's in place, you can't approach a VUCA world. You've got to have a culture that trains your employees what behavior is expected. You've got to connect with an outside community and collaborate both internally and externally to ensure what you are creating really has meaning and will drive content for your people going forward. We had another person from the military look at leadership tactics. And this next slide looks at the work by Dr by the U.S. Army Colonel, I'm sorry, I don't believe he was a doctor, U.S. Army Colonel Eric Kale. And he looked at the same four things. So when he looked at a volatile environment, so think back about 10 minutes ago when you decided what resonated most with you and your organization. When we talked about a volatile environment, that Colonel Kale feels the most important tactics you can have are to communicate clearly and ensure that your intent is well understood. If you are in an uncertain environment, you want to be extremely flexible and make sure that you are always getting fresh perspectives, that you are not holding yourself to only the things that you have done in the past. If you are in a complex environment, you want to develop collaborative leaders. If it's especially complex, think about our military, where so much of this research has come from. It's incumbent that the Navy work with the Marines, work with the Army. They've got to be collaborative, and they have to value interim solutions. In a complex environment, we don't always want to be looking at the end game. Sometimes we have to have small wins along the way as we go. And finally, if you find your situation to be especially ambiguous, we want to really encourage you to have that active listening and really understand the incremental dividends that you can reap by taking action as you move forward. Now let's look at how some of this VUCA stuff impacts our people. We're all HR professionals, and these are some things that are going on right now. The Bureau of Labor Statistics tells us that the national turnover rate is currently 23.6%, and we are expecting that to rise as people feel better and better about the economy. 
25% of your workforce approximately turning over is going to create a VUCA environment. Business Wire says that 60% of our new leaders underperform in their first two years. Now, this is a place where we as training and development professionals really can make an impact. But what we have to understand is that during those first couple of years, they're trying to figure out the environment. And if it's VUCA on top of that, it's all that much more complex. So what data and predictive techniques can we provide them to really help them drive the organization forward? According to the Gallup poll, 70% of the variance in employee engagement is all due to how people interact with their managers. So we want to make sure to own that because 43% of our employees don't feel valued by their employers. And we clearly don't want that to be the case. So look at all of these issues as interrelated and complex that are adding to this VUCA environment that we have to operate in as HR, talent, learning, and development professionals. So we have to be the person always asking why. Why are things going on? I think that we as leadership and development professionals dealing with our employees' population are in a perfect place to be that kind of inside outsider in our organization that can really help identify why people or when people are stuck in a rut that they may have been doing for a whole lot of years to come. So let's go back to looking at a few more business trends that are impacting the human resources in our organization. We know that many of our leaders have a concern over the skills gap. We know that the top quality our employees want from our leadership is honesty and integrity. 38% of the workforce is currently managed by millennials. So that's not how many millennials are in the workforce. That is the management. So the days of worrying about generations in the workplace, the millennials are here and they're running it. The other thing that I find fascinating is that right now today, 34% of our workforce are freelance workers. And I just read a report this week that says that by 2020, we are going to have over 40% of our workforce be freelancers. So one of the ways that I want you to really think about this concern over the skills gap is how can we provide training for the exact skills we need through our own organization? When I was at a conference, I heard an amazing story about an organization, a lumber mill in a very small town. I think it was in Kentucky or maybe Alabama. And they did not know what to do because they could not find workers who had the math skills that are typically seen in high school graduates to be able to work in their lumber yard. They had too many young people leaving town, going to college. They didn't see any real future. And so what they did was they actually formed a partnership with the local high school, and they had students come to the lumber mill for the day, but the morning was high school, and the afternoon they worked and got paid for it. And they were able to get their high school degrees while they were learning a curriculum that was specifically geared to work in the lumber mill, and they were working and making money in the afternoon. That's part of this volatile world is not saying, woe is me, what are we going to do, small town America may be dying, we have no workers, 
figure out a way to create those workers. And this particular organization did. You want to think about innovative intern programs. 50% of employers last year said that they could not find qualified workers. Well, maybe you're going to have to groom your own. And internships are a great way to do that. So think about today, which of these issues do you face in your organization? And obviously on a webinar like this, it's hard for us to get a lot of interaction. But which of these are your most important issues? And how are you going to get around that idea of both gathering data and predicting the future so that you are in a better position to address whichever one of these issues is VUCA for your organization? We have to look at organizational design as a really important factor in how we manage a VUCA world. If you have a more matrix type structure, for some of you um, that is an organization where somebody essentially has two bosses. Often it's a functional manager and then a local manager. So for instance, an HR manager and then um, somebody in their local office. But do you have an organizational design that allows people to make their own decisions? Or are they constantly required to rush off and get information from their boss? You want them to be in a place where they are able to operate their own way and have that kind of decision-making. Now, the decision-making can be within parameters. I'm not saying that we have to allow our employees out there to go do anything they want, but you want to make sure that your organizational design and the culture, which is not something I talk about on this slide, but really and the culture really supports what we want, how we want our employees to approach a VUCA workplace. So how might we look at employee development? The first is to make sure that we are really assessing they're fit before we promote them. And as development people on this call, most of you probably do that today. But we all know those managers and leaders who want to promote someone that they're especially excited about and don't really assess their future ability, but rather focus almost entirely on what they're doing today. We want to make sure that we are really defining what success is going to look like. Because one of the things that a VUCA world will do to us, not for us, but to us, is that we think we know what we want our leaders to be like. We think we know what the job description is going to be. And then 24 hours later, all sorts of things flip around. So if that is going to be the world we live in, we really have to talk about our leadership as competency-based. And what do we want these people to be able to do in terms of how they react to situations? We want to have transition programs in place so that we don't just promote someone and then expect them to be able to run with it immediately. We want some ways that they can experiment, they can learn, maybe even fail a little bit, and have a really great cushion there for when they do. And then finally, this got cut off a little bit, um, ongoing blended learning. And as I talked about a couple of minutes ago, we want our learning initiatives to be a combination of all sorts of opportunities 
Nowadays, we talk a lot about micro-learning. We want to talk about experiences and ways to get people out of their own workplace. As we talk about diversity, we've got to bring this into the conversation when we talk about a VUCA world. Because one of the things that is changing faster than we seem to know how are the various different things in this world that create the fiber of our workplace communities. And we have so many different ways in which we're diverse. So we want to make sure that our culture is truly supporting an organization that is free from prejudice, that allows different ideas and different theories to be brought to the table so that our employee population can not only work well together, but can share on some of those past experiences and bring different things to the table that really do help approach this VUCA world in lots of different ways. I mentioned a little bit earlier about the gig economy, and we really do want to embrace that. We need to embrace it. It honestly is one of the best tools we have for the VUCA world. We no longer are obligated to go out and hire what we need for the next eight to 10 years. Rather, we can be in a position that whatever we need today, we go out and hire that so that we've got people who are always staying up with what we do. It is amazing to look into organizations today and realize how many of the employees may actually be freelancers. We want to allow our people the possibility of time to work from an alternate location. I actually read something recently that said 60% of businesses allow flexibility in the place where people work. And that is some of how people deal with this VUCA world. As I started our conversation together today, I talked about the idea that VUCA often is the intersection of your work and personal life. And sometimes allowing people to work from a separate location doesn't really – will help them approach this VUCA world in a way that really is meaningful. The key to VUCA in the workplace is communication, communication, communication. You've got to think about, for example, let's talk performance management as a process and the VUCA world. Are the goals that a manager set for somebody in January even still relevant today in the middle of the year? Often they're not. How can we really know in January what we need accomplished in October, November, December? So make sure that your organization is fluid and flexible. Don't hold people to those goals to the point where they're ending up working on something that just doesn't even matter anymore. You want your managers to be able to sit with employees and give feedback and transition them to where they need them to be as we talk about the new things that are needed in your business. Now, talking about um, high-performing employees. We want to talk about, and goal setting. Um, I created a top talent worksheet that's in my book, HR Hacks, um, that has these six competencies. It's really what I believe we need to focus on as the behaviors we want in the workplace. We need people who behave properly, 
who have ambition, who are truly engaged, they've got to have the talent. You don't know how often I have seen people promoted to positions that are just above their heads. They just can't handle it. You want to make sure, of course, that they are performing the way you want them to. And if they don't have the talent today, that they truly have the potential to move themselves forward. And if anybody wants a copy of this, they can just email me. We're going to give you the information at the end. Um, I will be happy to share this document with you. It's a really great chart that I built out that helps look at these things department by department. But I think it's so important that managers don't rush to just promote someone, but rather really look at these six competencies. Now, I have talked about um, – blended training a little bit, and we want to really enforce the different ways you can give your employees the experiences that they are likely going to need in this VUCA world. Of course, you can modify their current job, but one of my favorites is self-directed development. I am really tired of everybody expecting the HR department or the training and development department to be responsible for getting employees to the next level. At what point do we turn around and say to employees, you are all adults, you all should know how to do this, and take some of this on yourself. Now, it doesn't mean they have to train themselves. But I like to see employees involved in a business book club, taking on the expense of subscribing to a periodical that will really help drive their, themselves forward. Participating in those external experiences that I've talked about that may be organization driven, but maybe they go out and find some on their own. And then there's always stretch assignments per providing individualized feedback, and participating in learning events as really good ways people can get behind all different ways to train themselves. So as we talk about goal setting in this VUCA world, it's critical that we are sure that our people are setting their goals in a way that align with whatever those drivers are for corporate success. So if you want to be an industry leader, then maybe part of what you want to do is get more press for your employees. If what really matters is defining that acceptable ROI, then make sure your employees know. Make sure they know what the goal is at the end of the year and they can approach different situations that are provided to them in a way that meets those REI goals. And my final tip on goal setting is that managers and companies are always honest with their employees about what the future holds. We can't all provide every development opportunity to every employee that wants it. It's often the case that we need to, we have, you know, only so many promotion opportunities, and sometimes people need to leave. But the only way they're really going to understand that and they're really going to appreciate where they are is to make sure that we're all walking in a mile in our CEO's shoes. Do we really know, understand, and appreciate where our CEO is going? Where is he or she set their sights that are going to take this organization to the next level? And that will, again, help give clarity to this VUCA world that seems to be spiraling out of control, at least if we know the path that we are going to journey through as we move forward, it's a way for you 
to get some clarity around this. Make sure that you have influence in your organization. And that doesn't always mean having the position or the title. As we think back to my mantra statement, being the strategic executive who's action-oriented and technologically savvy, it doesn't mean you have to be a senior VP. When I go into organizations and I go speak at associations and conferences about what it means to be an executive, it doesn't mean having a vice president title, but it does mean walking the walk and talking the talk. It means being a team player. It means being part of your organization that understands where you've been and where you're going and how you plan to get there. And the way that you have that kind of influence is by being a credible professional, being strategic in your own career as well as your organization, and really having reach throughout your entire company so that you're able to touch on these various points throughout the organization. You can't do any of this unless you've got a culture in your organization that speaks to the way people are to behave. So I love this diagram that talks about values, community, common goal. What is our vision? Language is not necessarily the language of English, Spanish, French, or any other language, but rather, how do we speak to each other? What is our go-to-market language? How do we talk about our organization in a way that makes people want to do business with us? And the reason I always have communicate three times on my chart is to remind managers that they have got to communicate with their employees more than just sending an email or more than just once a year at the annual performance review. They've got to get out there and participate and be actively engaged with their employees. They do need to send emails for those people who need the time to read and digest. And they should be having those face-to-face, one-on-one meetings that are so meaningful with their employees. As they communicate and as you communicate, this is from a dear friend of mine, Deb Calvert of People First Productivity Solutions, and she says it is critical that we inspire with emotion and convince with logic. You have got to start any conversation that you have with your organization as a way to pull people in. I had a situation years ago, a couple of years ago now, where we wanted to put an applicant tracking system in a very small grocery store that was really going through some hard financial times. So instead of just going to the CEO and saying, hey, do you think we could have a couple thousand dollars? Because we really think this applicant tracking system would make our lives a whole lot easier. We said it this way. We know the openings on the floor are causing poor customer service and overtime. I talked to the store manager, and he had three customers last week tell him how frustrated they were. In addition, over the last three weeks, overtime has been up 15%, which cost us $480 each week. If we use the new applicant tracking system, it would automatically reach out to candidates and schedule interviews at set times with qualified candidates. The fee is only $250 a month, and with that, we can put this whole issue to bed. Now, that took, what, four sentences, five sentences? The CEO heard it. We saw him in the hall one day and said that, and he said, fine, go ahead and do it. They have now renewed the contract with that applicant tracking system twice. So... We grabbed him with the information about poor customer service and overtime. 
we gave him the data he needed so that he knew there was real logic here and then gave him the problem it would solve. That is how we can operate in a VUCA world quickly, conveniently, and with emotion. So think about the next time you have to ask for something, if you can put it in those kinds of steps. What we want to do in the VUCA world is communicate directly, reliably, be trustworthy, and have an understanding of the situation. We went to that president with a recognition that we knew times were tough. We knew that there wasn't $250 just sitting around to throw at an applicant tracking system. But because we were direct and we understood the situation, we gave him reliable information that he could trust. He said, go ahead and run with it. And that's really what you're looking for. So let's wrap up with some real tips that you can take away when we're talking about the VUCA world. The first is redefine immediately what success looks like in your organization. Make sure that you are keeping egos in check. The VUCA world does not allow for people to worry about whose idea it was. We have to be people who are always learning and always bringing new things to the table and being open to everyone and their ideas because we never know where the next great idea is going to come from. Think about accepting multiple options and then running them all simultaneously and see what actually comes out to be the best. Let go of what you can't control and embrace risk. Business is risky. Not every decision is going to be able to be made with all the data you might want. If we think about these ideas and really live with the idea that we live in a VUCA world, like it or not, we will all win together. It may be different than it used to be. We won't all cross the finish line the same way, but we have to be flexible and agile enough to go over, under, behind, or in between, whatever it may be, to get your organization where they need to go. So with that, I share my contact information with you. I would love to be connected on LinkedIn, or you're welcome to email me for any of the tools that I've talked about here. Um, I've got the one on top talent. I've got something on blended learning, um, all sorts of things. So visit my website. I would love to be connected to anyone who would like more information. And I appreciate you having me here today, and I hope to be back again in the future. Thank you.